In Chapter 5, we discuss the risk factors now recognized as being implicated in atherosclerosis. We discussed how atherosclerosis can result in heart attacks, strokes, and peripheral vascular disease. The three risk factors discussed were elevated homocysteine levels, certain infections, and we'll explain the infection connection in more detail, and elevated cholesterol, especially elevated so-called bad cholesterol, called low-density lipoprotein, or LDL. We would not be complete in our discussion if we didn't list other risk factors known to be important in atherosclerotic risk. These include smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes, being overweight or obese, inactivity, stress, and excessive alcohol ingestion. Age and heredity also play a role in the risk for atherosclerosis, but these factors are pretty much beyond our ability to influence. We can lower our risk by lifestyle changes, which we all know are easy to talk about but often difficult to achieve. Easier to achieve is the lowering of our risk factors through intelligent nutritional supplementation. Let's address homocysteine again. We learned in Chapter 5, as you again see on the screen, that any level of homocysteine in your blood that exceeds 6.3 millimoles per liter increases your risk of having a heart attack and that each three-unit increase increases that risk by 35 percent. Homocysteine responds to vitamin supplementation, notably vitamins B6, B12, and folic acid, which is vitamin B9. If your homocysteine level is elevated above 6.3, a cocktail of these vitamins should lower your level to a more healthy level. Sometimes the addition of betaine, also known as trimethylglycine, or TMG, can be added to the B vitamins to help in the lowering of especially high levels of homocysteine. We mentioned infections by common germs as being implicated in atherosclerosis. You'll remember what happened when the big eaters called macrophages went through the homocysteine-damaged arterial lining. They had the intention of finding and literally eating and thus killing the germs that had gotten into the arterial wall but they got waylaid by the homocysteine oxidized tasty LDL cholesterol and by stuffing themselves they turned into the foam cells that constitute arterial plaque. What happened is called inflammation. When white blood cell germ seekers such as macrophages try to do their duty and protect us they are part of the immune system's inflammatory response. Let's read this illustrated explanation from a recent magazine article together, which is entitled, How It Goes Wrong. If the inflammatory fires refuse to die down or flare up for prolonged periods, permanent damage may result. A long-running, low-grade infection, like gum disease, may keep immune cells fired up, or there may be a breakdown in the complex series of checks and balances that regulates the immune system. Certain parts of the body are mistakenly selected by immune cells for attack. Macrophages start chewing up cholesterol deposits in the coronary arteries, or glial cells begin destroying neurons in the brain. The body's efforts to heal the damage it created end up only making matters worse. How ironic it is that our immune system's efforts to protect us can actually backfire and cause us harm. We now realize that chronic inflammation is the cause of many disease processes in our bodies. And the most devastating of these diseases is atherosclerosis and its consequences, heart disease, most strokes, and peripheral vascular disease. There is a test to measure inflammation in your body, and it's called a C-reactive protein test. A specific C-reactive protein test for arterial disease from plaque formation is called a high-sensitivity CRP, or HSCRP. Everyone who's being evaluated for heart disease should have an HSCRP test done. It isn't expensive, and it's highly recommended. Dr. Paul Ridker, Director of Cardiovascular Disease Prevention at Brigham Women's Hospital, has stated that C-reactive protein levels are actually superior to LDL cholesterol levels in predicting cardiovascular events. A cover story in U.S. News & World Report was titled, The Heart Test That Could Save Your Life. On the screen, you'll see an HSCRP Ranges and Disease Risk chart. 
Please become as informed as possible and have your physician order this test. And if you fall into a level where you are at risk, here is a suggestion about what you can do to lower your risk profile. Chronic infection from common germs has been implicated in causing the chronic inflammation that can occur. Remember those macrophages ingesting the oxidized LDL cholesterol and becoming foam cells, which became the plaques in the arterial wall? The immune system can be stimulated to recognize and attack those particular germs that began the whole immune system's inflammatory response. Transfer factors that are empowered to recognize those germs can be utilized by an individual to provoke an appropriate immune response. And something called red yeast rice can also be utilized because it has been shown to dampen an inappropriate inflammatory response. So what about cholesterol? Certainly cholesterol is implicated in atherosclerosis and elevated cholesterol levels must be addressed. After all, if LDL cholesterol hadn't been in the arterial wall for homocysteine to oxidize, it wouldn't have been there for macrophages to ingest, and the building blocks of foam cells and therefore of plaques wouldn't have been available. But interestingly, 35% of people who have coronary heart disease and strokes have a total cholesterol level of less than 200 milligrams per deciliter, as you'll see here, which is considered normal. Here is a chart showing the values in a complete blood lipid or blood fat profile. The components of a lipid profile are total cholesterol or TC, so-called good cholesterol, high density lipoprotein or HDL, triglycerides and so-called bad cholesterol or LDL. You can go to our website set up for video email subscribers to print this form out. The goal is to try to lower your total cholesterol and to lower your triglycerides and your bad LDL cholesterol while raising your good HDL cholesterol. Red yeast rice has been shown to be an effective natural supplement to achieve a more healthy lipid profile. While red yeast rice has been shown to be remarkably safe, please refer to our website for additional information prior to incorporating red yeast rice into your nutritional supplementation program. Garlic has also been shown to lower cholesterol and should be considered. Copper and magnesium can be incorporated to help normalize mildly elevated blood pressure. To help minimize the oxidative damage, that oxidized LDL cholesterol that the macrophages ingest, such antioxidants as selenium, copper, zinc, vitamin C and E, and resveratrol can be added to your supplementation. And to increase the pumping efficiency of the heart, magnesium and coenzyme Q10 have been shown to be effective. Atherosclerosis and its consequent diseases, heart disease, most strokes, and peripheral vascular disease is the number one threat to our health. Through lifestyle changes and informed nutritional supplementation, we can lower our risk factors and enhance our probability of having a longer and more fulfilling life.